Good morning, everybody, in the congregations of Macra Mason and Kilfennan, and uh, anyone else who is watching online in your homes again on uh, this Lord's Day morning. We give you a very, very warm welcome as you join with us uh, for worship. And I want to encourage you not just to be a, a watcher, but indeed a worshipper, and uh, we come to worship God together in our homes. And as we come to worship, we want to share the familiar words from the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 15, where Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Well, we're going to come and commit our time to the Lord in prayer. There's always much and many needs and individuals that we're praying for. But just particularly want to mention uh, David Thompson, the Congregational Secretary in Kilfenan. Uh, David was in for a major surgery on Friday for a kidney transplant. And uh, we just want to continue to remember uh, David, we trust, in, in recovery and for his wife Nicola and the girls and uh, other uh, things besides we come. Let's just uh, pray and seek the, the Lord together. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you indeed for the scriptures. We thank you for the word of Jesus here in John chapter 15, where he speaks of abiding in the vine. And Lord, we thank you that when you come to save us, that you make us part of the kingdom of God through Jesus, through what he has accomplished on the cross, and through his resurrection and the work of your spirit, you cause us to be convicted of our sins and you turn us in repentance and faith to come. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that great love that sent Jesus to the cross and that great love that many of us have experienced personally in our lives. And Lord, it was not that we first loved you, but that you first loved us. Lord, left to ourselves, we would be lost and alone. But we thank you indeed for a, this reminder of the love of Christ towards your people on this Lord's Day morning. And indeed it is through knowing Christ that we have joy in our lives. Even at times through trials and difficult times, Nehemiah reminds us the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And so we pray, Lord, the one for the other, as Jesus said that we're to love each other as he has loved us. Help us to have that love for each other, to pray for each other, particularly those who have been through difficult times. And in that regard, we want to remember uh, David to you, David Thompson. Uh, Lord, we pray for him uh, after major surgery, O oh God. And we just pray for your grace and your healing touch upon him. And Lord, we ask for Nicola and for the girls and the whole family in this time. And Lord, we just ask, O oh God, for your special grace for them and that your grace will be sufficient. And not just for David, but we know many others who are in hospital and are sick and perhaps are facing uncertain times. And we just pray, Lord, for your near presence. And that, Lord, we thank you again for your peace that passes all understanding and keeps our hearts and minds in Christ as we yield to you. So we pray that you will bless our service of worship uh, this day and that, Lord, as your word goes forward, it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that to which you send it, not just through this uh, online service, but through all the various services that are going on at this time. Oh, we pray for a spiritual harvest, for souls to be saved, and for your name to be glorified and your kingdom to be extended until that day that Christ returns again. Lord, revive us, we pray, and take the praise, the honour and the glory that we humbly offer in and through your lovely Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to soon praise together. 
and that after we praise God together, there's going to be a reading. Uh, we're looking at the Psalms over these weeks, and Psalm 16 is our focus this morning. Ruth Dale is going to read from the Scriptures, so do have your Bibles ready at home and turn it up to Psalm 16. And uh, boys and girls, also uh, trust that you're ready and maybe sitting near the screen or at the front of your little room where you're gathered, and we'll be speaking to you. And just after Ruth shares, uh, there's going to be uh, three uh, children who are, are sharing the last verse again, and that's Joel, Jacob, and uh, Rosalind Shannon. And they're going to share the, the final verse of Psalm 16. And then boys and girls are going to be sharing a little more about that particular verse with you after the reading of God's Word. Thank you. All Ham declares the glory of the risen Lord who can safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord, apart from you I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalm 16, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Well, thank you to Ruth for reading God's word and also to Joel, Jacob and Rosalind for your contribution. And uh, boys and girls of Macron Mason, uh, hopefully we'll get back to seeing some of you uh, next Sunday. 
and uh, we want to alternate between uh, Kilfernan folks and Macromason folks uh, each week. The theme really I'm thinking of for today's service is joy and uh, it's good for us that we, we think about what, what makes us joyful boys and girls particularly through uh, these difficult times. Hard to believe now that it's been six weeks of uh, this sort of lockdown and we're into May now and uh, where has the time gone? And we really, well, we're missing each other, aren't we, boys and girls? Again, I look down at an empty church and I'd love to have you all around and listening as you normally are. But uh, do, do draw up a little closer to the screen there as we talk to you, boys and girls, particularly. I want to ask a question to you, boys and girls, this morning. What brings you joy in your life? What brings, I suppose, that, uh, that happiness we might say uh, to you, have a little think, hmm, I wonder you say to yourself, what makes me joyful? Is it schoolwork? Well, I don't know, maybe a little bit of schoolwork's okay, but I know that's, that's not easy. And uh, maybe you're trying to do some, some work at home through the week, and maybe for mommy and daddy, uh, there's maybe not so much joy in getting the schoolwork done. But maybe there's joy when you think of a favourite TV programme. I know there are a couple of boys that are, are waiting on the new series of Jamie Johnson, the footballer, starting uh, this week. And maybe it's a favourite TV programme or something like Britain's Got Talent or uh, this sort of thing that brings a little bit of happiness to you, boys and girls. Maybe it's getting outside. And again, we're so thankful for the good weather. The good weather maybe makes you joyful, boys and girls, being able to get out and run about and, and play. And uh, these, these uh, simple pleasures can, can bring joy uh, to your hearts uh, at this time. Maybe it's getting something new, a new iPhone or a new game, or maybe it's a new bicycle, and uh, there's more people out and about exercising on their bikes. And, and maybe something like this has brought you some happiness. Maybe it's been your birthday in recent days. And I know it's been strange for you, a different type of party when you've not been able to have your friends or your, your grandparents around. But uh, that usually brings a little bit of happiness, doesn't it, into our, our lives. Maybe it's uh, the prospect of holidays. And of course, that's under uh, great doubt. And uh, many of us are, are spending our holidays at our gate, aren't we, at this time? And uh, well, who knows, uh, just the, the things that bring you happiness. But you know, when we think of all of the things that I have mentioned, and maybe you have some examples and you can shout them to mum or dad or, or something that makes you joyful or happy, all of them are passing. All of them, they are here for a while and then they pass away. Think of the happiness you've had in a past holiday, it's for a week or a couple of weeks and then it passes away. Think of the, the happiness you receive from a new gift and a new item and it can be dropped or broken and that passes away. Or that favourite programme, you watch it and then it passes. And the, even friends and family and the, those that we love, they are passing. But you know here in uh, Psalm 16, in this last uh, verse that the uh, uh, Joel, Jacob and Roslyn uh, read and shared and uh, we're told about where we can find lasting joy and David here writing Psalm 16 says you God have made known to me the path of life and true and lasting joy is found in our eternal God our heavenly father and in his son Jesus and boys and girls when we want to see God and know more about God we look to Jesus and wasn't it Jesus before he went to the cross in John chapter 14 verse 6? You know the verse I'm sure, boys and girls. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And what Jesus was saying was he was the path of life, of fullness of life and to real joy in our lives. And here David says it's in knowing God and looking forward, David here writing, he's looking forward to Jesus. We look back to Jesus, but here is life. And not just life, but in God's presence, David says there's fullness of joy. And boys and girls, that is just so true. When we know the Lord Jesus as our Saviour and Lord, we can know something that's different from just a passing happiness that can be up and down but true lasting joy 
and that that joy lasts through our lives, even through tough times, we can still know God's joy, God's peace, and that this is wonderful. And it's a full joy. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life to the full. And not just life in this life, but the promise of eternal life. And whenever we face death, even boys and girls, we can know the promise of heaven and home. And it says here, this last little portion, at God's right hand are pleasures evermore. And you know, I'm really looking forward, boys and girls, that day I get to heaven and see Jesus in all of his glory and to be there in God's presence forever. And I just trust and pray, boys and girls, that you will know something of joy from the Lord God through Jesus. And, and we can know something of this when we stop, boys and girls. I want to encourage you, please keep reading your Bibles or get Mummy and Daddy to read the, the scriptures with you. Or there's lots of resources online. You can go to Child Evangelism Fellowship and all sorts of things you can look at and that are centered on God and Jesus. And these will bring you joy. And take time to pray, boys and girls, and continue to pray for our world at this time and pray for each other. And uh, I pray that you will continue to grow in your own relationship with God and that you will know this joy that comes from God through Jesus. Well, thank you for listening so well, uh, boys and girls. And now we're going to have a praise together. And uh, Robbie and Ellie Lynch, again from Kilfenan, are going to, to lead us in the chorus be bold and be strong and for it says in the chorus the Lord our God is with us and that's so true when we know Jesus that the Lord our God is with us and that equals great love and great joy so up on your feet boys and girls and let's follow the actions and the words you'll see on the screen and let's all sing out to God's praise together just now some announcements to bring at this stage. First of all again thank you to Robbie and the Ellie for leading us in that uh, praise. To remind everybody of the evening service, uh, the service will be available on both the Facebook pages, Macromason and Kilfenan and I encourage everyone to join together if you can at 6 30. Uh, the message will hopefully be available around an hour before that for you and uh, we're looking tonight at 1 Samuel, the life of Samuel. Uh, and we're looking at restoration and revival under Samuel. And for Macromason folks, that's a little summary of our readings uh, this week in the Community Bible Experience as we follow on from week 11 and now uh, next week into week 12 uh, together for those of you who are using that. 
Midweek there will be a message again on Wednesday from 7.30. Uh, again, that's on the book of Philippians. Uh, we had a little introduction last week to that book and we're going into chapter 1 in a little bit more detail, God willing, together there on Wednesday night. Much to encourage us in the book of Philippians, so I trust you'll be able to join. And then the Zoom prayer times in both congregations at 8.30. We appreciate your ongoing uh, feedback through the social media and we encourage you, if you can, please share the pages, the Facebook pages particularly, a great way to reach out to others and we want to see the increase of, of folks uh, being able to, to join and to be encouraged. Maybe you can invite some friend or family member to listen to who hasn't listened before and these are ways that we and you can reach out to others simply uh, through this time and encouraging people to tap into our, our services and uh, to hear not from from me but from from the lord from his holy word and that's why our focus always in these times of sharing online uh, the, the basis is the word of god and that's what brings the change and gives us the encouragement and the help that we need thank you for those who are giving online we encourage you to continue if you can to do so contact the treasurers leslie hamilton or charles kane if you want to know more about that and uh, thank you to those who have dropped some envelopes through the month's door there. And we thank you for your ongoing contributions during these different days. Then next Sunday, God willing, there'll be a message from Reverend Dennis Bannerman. Uh, I have to go into hospital tomorrow for just a, a minor uh, surgical procedure. Uh, but that will necessitate that I will be uh, off for the next two weeks and uh, in my absence the Reverend Paul Lincolns will provide pastoral cover, emergency pastoral cover for Kilfenham and Reverend uh, Mark Russell he will be providing some pastoral cover for Macra Mason uh, this week and then Reverend Stuart McCray the following week God willing and uh, thank you to those uh, who are providing that, that cover and you can also contact if you need some of the, the clerks of session uh, Will Doran or Colin Kennedy or indeed any of your elders uh, over these next couple of weeks if you have a particular need well now we're going to have some prayers of intercession and uh, Miss Pamela Royal is going to lead us in prayer and then we're going to have a further Bible reading from the New Testament. So have your Bibles ready at hand again. Acts chapter 2 and from verse 22 to 39. Ronnie Dale will be reading from there the scriptures. And then we're going to join together in praise before we come to God's word this morning as we sing together, Beautiful Saviour. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning with our prayers of intercession, we first of all come with thankfulness because you are our rock in the midst of a broken and fragile world. We pray for our world in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, that you would be with all those working on the front line, caring for the sick in our hospitals, care homes and hospices. We thank too of those in community, caring for the elderly and vulnerable. We also pray for those who are in the emergency services and all those who are keeping our country going. Farmers, shop workers, postal workers, lorry drivers, refuse collectors and many, many more. Be with them, Lord, at this time of anxiety. May they have the proper protective equipment to keep them safe. We pray for all those who are grieving because of losing loved ones in this pandemic. Be close to them and bring them your comfort. We are also mindful of those who have lost loved ones in other ways, that you would minister to them and bring your peace. Lord, when our natural response is to come around those who are grieving, to give a hug or a handshake, we can no longer do this. So Lord, be very present with those who are going through grief and loss. We pray for the economy and those struggling financially or with mental health issues or just with the isolation and the unexpected change in lifestyle. We pray you would come close in every situation and bring your peace. We also pray that at this time people would seek you, O oh Lord. Broken sisters would draw people away from you, yet Father, when we focus upon the cross, 
we are reminded of your amazing grace and love open to all. We thank you for your word going out across the land through social media and pray that as people listen to your word, they will come and bow the knee and put their trust in you. Thank you for Graham, and we pray your protection upon him and his family and that they may do no blessing at this time. Be with the politicians and leaders of our land that they would be wise and listen to your voice. May they make wise decisions about managing coming out of lockdown, testing and finding a vaccine. Thank you, God, that you are working through all the situations in our world today. We believe in your power, Lord, and your sovereignty over all things. Father, you know how we are feeling. You know our hearts at this time and pray that you will give us a peace and a rest. Lord, give us a quietness and a confidence in your strength. Thank you that you have promised that you will never leave us or forsake us. You are God and you know the way and we are glad. We thank you for your precious word, which is full of promises that apply to our daily lives. We draw comfort from the words in Psalm 34. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. So Father, we leave all our prayers and concerns and cares in your mighty powerful hand. In the name of our precious Saviour, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Acts 2 from verse 22. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One, see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that if he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? You 
Psalm 16 together this morning. Lord, we thank you again for your presence with us in our homes where two or three of us are gathered together for worship. You are here with us and that to bless us. And Lord, we pray as we come now that you will just speak through the power of your Holy Spirit. Give us hearts open and responsive to your word and indeed wills to obey. And that Lord, we might know this joy that comes only truly from you as we ask humbly again, in Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I want to encourage you, do have your Bible open at Psalm 16, and simply we're going to go through the psalm uh, together. And uh, asking the question to the boys and girls earlier about joy, and I wonder as you continue to think of that theme, where is joy normally found, we could say, in, in normal circumstances? Well, for many it is as you look forward to the summertime and maybe that time away at the port of the caravan or uh, wherever it might be or for some i know uh, i love just going down to the, to the poster strand there and walking up up the beach 
and uh, there's a, a lovely just joy in, in getting out to enjoy uh, the simple things and pleasures of, of life or even just a cup of coffee with friends and, and uh, that sort of coming together can, can bring a, a, a happiness into our, our lives for, for times and seasons. But all things we know can change very quickly and uh, these normal roots of uh, happiness we could say in many people's lives were changed weren't they six weeks ago with two simple words coronavirus and from that time and this past number of weeks for many that has taken away any sort of a usual we might say happiness or, or even joy for many there's stress uncertainty anxiety there's the worry of being cut off from certain family members there's the stress i mentioned earlier of, of homeschooling at times and that sort of stress on relationships in the home at times and the, the cabin fever when it all just becomes too much on some days and then of course the fact that we can't meet together in church and, and we can't have the fellowship that we love on a Wednesday evening or on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening and maybe for some of you you're finding this time of isolation just now a, a little bit tedious as it continues and then add into the mix perhaps a particular family trial or indeed sickness or bereavement and all of a sudden it can seem too much but someone has said that happiness is connected with our happenings it's like a bit of a roller coaster of our emotions from day to day even the weather and the change in the weather can affect how we feel inside but here as we turn together in psalm 16 we again find a description of true biblical joy and we know that for the christian that is intimate relationship with jesus and so biblical joy is not found in life's circumstances and the circumstances that you find yourself in again this morning as you view online but again it's in and through the abiding presence of god and we read again that lovely text that the boys and girls read in psalm 16 verse 11 david says you make known to me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures evermore. And so we're going to look at this psalm. It says here, if you look at the beginning of the psalm, it uh, uses the term a uh, miktam of David. David writing this very well known psalm. Perhaps a musical term, but the Hebrew word miktam resembles the word for covering. And there are seven miktam psalms and most of them relate to David and four of the seven relate to David's life sorry three of the seven relate to David's life when, when he was what we call a night law or the years and the times that he was on the run and there were times that he had to cover himself or conceal himself from his enemies and this is one of these situations that we read off here in Psalm 16. Maybe you feel a wee bit concealed or uh, isolated at this time in your home and you can in some way get an idea but a totally different uh, circumstance of course because you can go to the fridge or you can have a degree of normality but, but David's concealment was that he had to hide away from imminent danger because his, his life was a threat and then when it was safe for him then he was able to, to move on to a, another place of relative safety another idea of this term uh, miktam uh, the title of the psalm is also the idea of engraving or inscription the idea of an engraving and we often think in connection with an engraving of, of a headstone the engraving of a loved one their, their name and perhaps a little verse around their, their life or or a phrase there and it's engraved and here david is remembering he remembers this particular circumstance in psalm 16 very well it wasn't a pleasant circumstance for him and it was a circumstance where he was certainly 
near death or his life was under threat. And is not so in our lives that it's sometimes the, the difficult times, the hard times that we have come through that are ingrained in our memory. Perhaps those times in your life where your, your life could have been taken but by God's grace you were preserved. I remember on certainly a couple of occasions that I won't forget as a young uh, 17 year old just passing the test and uh, going down to, to Portrush and overtaking a bus foolishly and a car coming and, and having to stop and get in behind the bus and, and I remember that, that time where the Lord preserved my life. Another occasion as an assistant down in Cookstown, I shared with the folks in Macra Mason where again we were confronted, four of us in a car at a time of a funeral with an ongoing car uh, on a dual carriageway. It was, it was on the wrong road, on the wrong side of the dual carriageway and literally the four of us were just one second from eternity and our lives literally flashed before us. But again God in his mercy uh, allowed us to, to escape and to, to, to miss death really at that time and, and perhaps you can think of times like that and, and they become ingrained and, and in this situation this has become ingrained in David's memory. Perhaps it was when he was on the run from King Saul. Remember Saul was the king and, and David, uh, he was jealous of him and he pursued him and later in the life of David we're also reminded that uh, his son Absalom came to the throne and he also would pursue him. So it's in one of these situations that this psalm is written. And you can imagine in a situation of David being pursued, he would have concealed himself. We read that how he concealed himself at times in the cave, in the dark place, in the place where he would not be seen or out in the open. And you see David here is, is facing unjust persecution. And sometimes for us and for you to, to live for Christ means that it will not be easy. The Christian life is not easy. Life throws plenty of curveballs, we might say, towards us. And there can be hardships and difficulties that we all have to meet. But what does David say here as we come to the first verse? David a, a, is appeal. Who's it to? It's to the Lord. He, he can't appeal to the king. He can't appeal to the priest for his life was in danger, but indeed his appeal is to the Lord. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. And that's where our appeal needs to continually be in these days, that we cry to the Lord to preserve us and we take refuge in him. And we remember that God is a mighty fortress for us. Was not Martin Luther, when uh, times of trouble came, he went to his favourite psalm, Psalm 46, again and again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help for us in the time of trouble. And there's that idea of David here, although his life is in danger, he's, he's crying to the Lord God for refuge and for preservation in his circumstance. And we thank God for his preserving and for his refuge in our lives and then in verses two to four we we read firstly in verse two of, of david's declaration and then in verse three we read of his delight and in verse four of his dedication look at verse two here's first of all david's declaration i say to the lord you are my lord i have no good apart from you he declares that god is his portion that God is good and he is no other good in life apart from the Lord. He delights then in verse 3 of the fellowship that he had with God's people. He speaks of the, the people, the saints of God as the excellent ones in whom he delights. And again that's the, the special unique fact of the Christian church when we know Christ as Lord and Saviour we then have a bond with each other a delight in God's people and, and isn't that again what we miss so much of, of actually physically coming together and meeting together we get a certain sense through Zoom or as we lift the phone to speak to somebody but, but we, we miss the delight of God's people coming together and of singing together and, and lifting our praises to God. And, and again, David's in this situation. He's separated away uh, from God's people and uh, he, he is yet delighting 
in God's people as he remembers others. And maybe you're remembering other friends that you're missing and you can find a light and encouragement in that thought. And then there's a dedication. His service, David's service, was ultimately for, for the Lord. And he says there are sorrows for those who run after idols or false gods. Many who were chasing him, his enemies, and those who, who follow just the things of the, the world. There's an emptiness in them all. Jesus says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world even and loses his own soul? But there's a, there's a, a, a dedication, there's a, a loveliness for, for God's children in following the Lord. Even though that's very different in these days. But there's, there's an adventure, there's an excitement and following Jesus. That was one of the things that struck me when God saved me and, and been able to serve the Lord. I remember going up to the, the old atmosphere in Valley Castle in those early Christian days and oh the joy and the excitement of serving Jesus. And even the joy and even the excitement I have to, to even share some thoughts from, from this psalm. What a joy it is to, to serve the Lord. And even for you, even a cup of water given in the name of Jesus, that will be blessed by, by God the Father. And here David thinks of, of the offerings and, and even his service and your service uh, for, for the Lord compared to those who, who don't know Jesus and uh, the, the emptiness that there can be in many's a life. But then further look at uh, verses 5 and 6. Here David speaks of assurance and security. He says, The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup, and you hold my lot. The lines are fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Isn't that interesting? In David's position, when he's perhaps hidden in the cave and his life is undoubtedly in danger, but, but even in his circumstance, what does he say? He says, the lines have fallen in pleasant places. He speaks of a beautiful inheritance. And we know that for the, the Israelite, that, that the land was important. Remember in the day of Joshua, as he came into the promised land, it was, was the land and the division of the land that was important to the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And the lines were drawn and the, and the boundaries were marked out and, and that was of an importance. And, and God blessed his people through this land of, of milk and honey, as the Bible speaks of it, and uh, the, the inheritance of, of the land. And yes, in some regard, David was privileged. He, he knew God's increase. Uh, he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, and he knew something of, of this, uh, this grace uh, in, in, in his life in times past. But even in his current circumstance in the cave, he could still say that the lines had fallen in pleasant places because David knew that he had a greater inheritance than, than the, 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 the land that he had and the possessions that he had as, as the king. But, but he had a greater inheritance in looking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus. And that's the assurance that he, that he has. And again, that's the great assurance that, that you have. Even though at this time of lockdown, you can still say the lines have fallen in pleasant places. God has been good and gracious in my life, perhaps you can say, or in my family, or in my situation. And you can say with David, indeed, the lines have fallen in pleasant places, and indeed. And uh, here then is, is joy. Joy for, for God's people, even uh, through the, these times, because we know for the child of God there's a, a great joy, there's an eternal inheritance in the, the Lord. And uh, David goes on there, if you, you look at, at uh, verse 7, he says, I bless the Lord, he gives me counsel. In the night my heart also instructs me, for I have set the Lord before me, because he is at my right hand, and I shall not be shaken. God's a God who guides his people. God's a God who gives wisdom to his people. Even at night time, you know those times when, when you, you're struggling to sleep and there's a struggle going on, but even at those times you can yield and pray and seek the Lord. Uh, we have a, a friend and I remember well when uh, God saved her. I remember she contacted her home minister and she said, I think the Lord has saved me. 
And yet, at that time of coming to Christ, it was then that she used to develop quite a lot of uh, serious illness. And uh, a lot of time couldn't sleep. But I remember as I went to visit the home, uh, this particular uh, lady said that even in those night watches when she couldn't sleep and her body perhaps was racked with pain and discomfort, it was in those times she knew great joy and comfort because she knew the, the closeness of the Lord. And, and here's David, uh, at times sleepless, but yet knowing the closeness of the Lord and even the joy of the Lord, knowing that God is at his right hand. And that's the joy of God's people, that God is, is at our right hand. He, he's near at hand. He's, he, he's near us particularly in, in our times of need as we walk through the valley even of the shadow of death. He, he comes to lead us and give us strength, his rod and his staff. They give us comfort and help. And uh, here David expresses something of this. Uh, and this leads him to rejoice, verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. Isn't that lovely? That we can rejoice and we can lift our hearts and, and we can praise the Lord with, he says, our whole being, even in the midst of adversity. You know, I think uh, we were thinking on Wednesday evening of Acts chapter 16 of Paul and Silas and the stocks and, and their, their backs were, 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 were whipped and they were in the inner dark prison. But it says at midnight, what were they doing? They were singing and giving praise to God. And again, isn't that just something wonderful and supernatural about the situation and in the midst of adversity? And maybe you're going through it, you can, you can know, uh, giving praise. And here's David in his desperate situation and he's giving praise uh, to God for he has a confidence in one that would not leave him. Look at verse 10. He says, For I know you will not abandon my soul even to Sheol, to, to the place of, of, the, of the, the departed, uh, to, to death even, or let your Holy One see corruption. Even when our bodies, all of us, our bodies will, will die and decay and will go into a grave. But again, for the child of God, even in that situation, some of you have lost loved ones. We know that the Lord will not abandon his people even at the point of death. Death is horrible. This coronavirus has claimed many lives and other illnesses beside. And we know death comes because of sin. And it robs us of joy, of course. And it's horrible. And there's a sting in death. But yet... Here David says that, that he knows that, that he is not abandoned even when it comes to the time of his own departure. He says uh, later in, in verse 11, But you have made known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. God is the God of life. God is the God who opens up and makes that way of life, even in the midst of adversity, even with perhaps the, the, the fear or the loss of a loved one, yet there's the hope of life through our God. In Acts chapter 13, there's a reference to this Psalm 16, and it tells us there in Acts 13, for David, after he served the purpose of God in his generation, he fell asleep. And he was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up did not see corruption. You see here as we, we look in the New Testament, the, the New Testament writers, they're, they're looking back as Dr. Luke records in Acts 13 of, of David. And, and yes, there's a corruption of, of the body, but he, he speaks of one who, who did not know corruption, of one who was, was raised from, from the dead. And uh, he speaks and points us to Jesus Christ. And that's our, our ultimate hope, even in the grave, that we're not abandoned in death because there's one who has faced death on our behalf, Jesus Christ. And we read, Ronnie read earlier from Acts chapter 2 there, where again Psalm 16 uh, is quoted very clearly. And uh, the, the, again on this great sermon of Peter on the day of Pentecost, he preaches really on Psalm 16. And these verses of, of the, the, the hope and the, of the soul that, that would not be abandoned even in death. 
but of, of this fullness of joy that comes in God's presence. And uh, here uh, Peter uh, goes on to preach about Christ and of how he died on the cross when God raised him up. And again, the eternal hope and even joy that we know through this resurrection. And this power of the Spirit of God that caused 3,000 souls to, to be saved on this day of Pentecost. And that so many came into the joy of the Lord. And we know as God's people that this fullness of joy in this final verse comes from Christ. Here's David writing in this cave, uh, thinking of this cave situation, but he's writing prophetically, looking forward to Christ and even the, the risen Saviour. Isn't this wonderful? The, the, the lovely uh, coming together of Scripture, of Old Testament and, and New Testament being weaved in together. And uh, it's just here really a, a snapshot David sees as he looks into the future prophetically and, 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 and we look back as it were. And we can see a clearer picture of Jesus just as this is being recorded. There's, we might say, a, a more of a clearer picture of film as we look back as it were. And, and yet it, it's nothing compared to, to the future and the future glory, the reality of, of, of Christ himself. John, in 1 John, writes there, doesn't he, uh, of, of he and the other disciples who heard and saw Jesus and, and they listened. And, and uh, he says there uh, to, to, to those that he's writing to who are under hardship and they're undergoing persecution to, to encourage them. And uh, he, he says that, that it's in Christ that we know this joy. We have, we have known complete joy, John says. A completion of joy. Is it something maybe you're lacking in your life? You're knowing the ups and downs of the emotions like all of us, but, but you don't, don't know this true living joy that comes only from knowing Jesus. Again, in Acts chapter 2, as Peter speaks, referring to Psalm 16 of David's situation, looking back, and he, he goes on to preach about the cross. This is what he says. And he challenges his hearers in verse 37. He says, Now when they had heard this message, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, this is the crowd now. Brothers, what will we do? You're in this situation, you're locked in and, and you're at wit's end. And, and you're, you're saying perhaps, what do we do? Peter says, repent. And be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promises for you and for your children. And for all who are afar off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. You see, here's the, the hope of the gospel. And it's in repentance and turning away from your sin and knowing forgiveness of sin and cleansing and knowing the gift of God, the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus coming into your heart and your life, this brings joy. He takes away the sadness and the brokenness and, and the wasted years and he gives you a joy, a lasting joy and an eternal hope that no one can ever take away. And maybe you feel afar off. Maybe you feel you've gone too far. But you know, if God is calling you, he says, God calls people to himself. It's not me, it's God through his Holy Spirit. And you must come just humbly and, and just confess your sin. Sin robs us again of joy, but when we confess it and we repent, and even as God's people every day, we need to repent, don't we? For we all fail, we fall. David failed, didn't he? And, and, sin and his adultery with Bathsheba and organising murder and, and yet in Psalm 51 we read of his great prayer of repentance and, and here again the, the, this last verse of uh, the, the, the path of life and the fullness of joy and these come from the, the right hand of our God and, and ultimately Jesus Christ this joy comes from him because he is a risen saviour and, and he rose victorious from the dead. And where is he now? He is at God's right hand. God the Father and at the right hand seated on his throne is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
and it's Jesus. It's the, the, the Holy Spirit ministering through his word and, and as we take time to sit in his lovely presence and be still and be quiet perhaps in those early morning hours or whatever time that you have, we know this uh, lovely, lovely presence of, of God. And it's this that gives us joy. And isn't it just a, a little foretaste of what the joy must be like for those who are now in heaven, for those who have been saved by God's grace, and only those who are saved will be assured of heaven, only those who have been truly born again by this work of the Spirit of God. And, and they uh, are in this fullness of joy in, in heaven forevermore where there's, there's, there's no more weeping or, or no more sin or suffering or pain or death but it's indeed joy, joy, joy forevermore. In conclusion Hebrew says for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of our praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name, and his name is holy. And for those who are in the glory with the angels and the seraphim and all the redeemed of God, their cry continually is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, because their praise is centred on the Lamb, the Lion of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And isn't it a wonder that we, by grace, when we know Christ as Saviour, we will not just be, be justified and sanctified, that means being made more and more holy and knowing more of God and, and, and we know uh, more of jo joy and, and obedience to God, but then we'll be glorified, we'll be kings and priests forever. And we too will know what it is to be indeed at God's closeness and right hand forevermore. So life is uncertain. It was uncertain for David, certainly, as he writes Psalm 16. But we thank God that he's that refuge, that strength. We know that his ways are best. The lines have fallen to us, many of us, by grace in pleasant places. And indeed, that we can rejoice with our whole hearts that the Lord does not abandon his people in life, in death, and for all eternity. For Christ is risen, and in his presence there is fullness of joy, and in his right hand and in God's right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word, for the Psalm, Psalm 16, the encouragement that we receive, O God. We thank you, Lord, that we can know great joy in your presence. Although times are tough and there are difficulties around about us, but yet we thank you, Lord, that there is joy, not just in life, but indeed even in death for your people. And that joy is the joy and the hope of eternal life in heaven. So, Lord, impart something of that joy to us as we close our service now. Help us to respond to the prompting of your Holy Spirit and that we will give all glory to Jesus as we think of the joy that comes through knowing him as we ask in his high and holy name. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, conclude now uh, through this lovely hymn that speaks of the power of his love, the love of Christ, and make this a response as we close and as we close out this morning with the Lord together. And uh, let's give God praise. And again, please, if, if you want to, on, on this Sunday, uh, I don't know uh, what tomorrow will bring, but uh, even today, today's the time, now's the day of salvation. Just lift your phone even today on this Sunday and why not give me a ring, 718 And if I can help you, please, I would be only too glad to do so. Or maybe just get alone with the Lord, uh, get away from the rest of the family, whatever you need to do, and uh, just come and uh, just know this joy being restored even in your own life and your own family situation uh, this day. Let's come as we conclude in praise and we sing of the power of this wonderful love of God. Wonderful power
Calvary's tide, there's wonderful power in the blood. forevermore until you call or come Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>